welcome to Firing by the Fire, where we're going through the book of Acts, verse by verse, because the book of Acts is by far, by far the best example, if not really the only example, of what it is to really be the church, uh, absent from Jesus Christ. What does that mean? And what we see is it definitely is something completely different than what we're experiencing today. And, well, what they are doing is different than what the church is doing. But what the church is doing is very similar to what the religious leaders of their day were doing. So it's kind of like we're looking at the same thing, but they're behaving more like the Pharisees, whereas in the remnant is trying to be the church. And that's what it will ultimately be like in the last days. And what we saw is we've reached that place where we see that the religious people are actually doing like the church is today, which is neglecting the least of these. It says in six that they were neglecting the widows and that it is then the the Christians. And, and I, they're more like the remnant because they're not like today's Christians. These are people, well, the disciples, let's call them the disciples. It was the disciples who then decided, well, we better take care of the widows because the Holy Spirit is telling us to do that thing. And they recognize that and they put together a group of men through the Holy Spirit to do that. And we're just going to pick it up there. So we're going to go to Acts 6, starting verse 1. Now in those days, when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a murmuring against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said to them, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, Seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Chorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. And when they sat before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. And the word of God spread, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of priests were obedient to the faith. So here what you have is you ultimately have, you know, if you, if you watch one of the earlier episodes, uh, I think it was two episodes ago, you know, a, a priest from the temple pointed out, well, if this is from God, it'll flourish if, and there's nothing you can do about it. If it's from man, this is gonna become nothing. So no need to kill these guys. It was his way of kind of talking them down from killing them. And, but he was right, he was very correct. And as they see, they're, they're multiplying, but they immediately go towards the business of taking care of the least of these. They immediately go to that business. And they actually are very wise about it. And they do this all through the Holy Spirit. They do it by choosing something like who is appointed for this thing. And it's interesting because as I've gotten to know folks around this country and here in Missouri who are of the remnant, everybody's got different roles. Some are serving tables, some are cooking food, some are taking care of prisoners. Um, they're all doing something if that makes sense. Um, they're all doing something and it's the Holy Spirit that's guiding them to that thing. And here's the reality is that if your relationship with Jesus Christ is real, if it's real, it's real, like not like you just said some stuff when you were 12 and you kind of believe it to be true, but you never really made him Lord or called him master or father or friend you know if the relationship is real then you're gonna be filled with the Holy Spirit you're gonna be filled it's a promise in the Word of God and and if you're filled with the Holy Spirit you're gonna have things like discernment you're able to see things that nobody else seems to see 
you know, kind of like the world we live in now. It seems like, like I look at most people at a church and I'm like, how is it they don't see this? It's like, like there's like 500 of them and there's one of me and I, I, like, am I really the only one that sees this? But no, it's the same way. I read all around the world. There's like one of you out of 500. That's like, how do they all not see this? So you get discernment. You all, you know, if they had the spirit, they'd see it as well. And so you get discernment, but you also get this nudge from the Holy Spirit to take care of the least of these. It's really quite simple. The Holy Spirit is going to break your heart for the things that break God's heart. So if somebody's suffering there, it's going to break God's heart. And if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's gonna break your heart too. If you're just sitting there going, well, I pay my taxes, I don't gotta help that person. Well, you're clearly not filled with the Holy Spirit at all. Or if you're like, well, I threw 20 bucks in a plate, you know, or all he's gonna do is buy alcohol with it. You know, it's, it's just whatever excuse you wanna to use to hold on to that precious money or hold on to those precious resources. This is my food, get your own food. Like that's clearly not of the Holy Spirit. It's not, and there's no place for the Holy Spirit in a place like that. So if you have the Spirit, you're just gonna desire to do these things. And here what you see is you literally see the religious people neglecting the widows. Well, why are they doing that? Because they're focused on their own agenda. Well, why are the disciples doing it? Because the Holy Spirit told them to. It's not that complicated. You know, this is really a beautiful example. And even, you know, even it says of Stephen, who is filled, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, you know, here he is. And of course, if you read on, I mean, goodness gracious, here in the next few verses, he's gonna be killed for, for doing this thing, for taking care of widows. I mean, this is something that we really have to accept that, you know, if you look at all of the prophets, you know, all of them, you look at anybody who tried to do the business of God, somebody was trying to kill him. <laughs> I just, I mean, think about it. Think about, try to come up with one biblical character who was doing, not the ones that were doing whatever they wanted in the world, but the one, pick one that was doing the will of God and find somewhere where it doesn't say they weren't, somebody that wasn't trying to kill them. At some point, somebody's trying to kill them. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. It, you know, and, and even in the verses before that, you know, when the, when the disciples were thrown in jail and the, the religious people sought to kill them. When they let them go, they rejoiced in the suffering. That's not what's happening in the church today. None of that stuff, none of that stuff. I think if you could kind of glance into the synagogues of these days and looked at the Pharisees and Sadducees, and I think you'd be like, well, that kind of looks like the church to me. You know, just a big fancy building with, you know, people dressed in fancy clothes, just chattering, repeating the same stuff over and over again. Look how much biblical knowledge I have. Look at me. I have more biblical knowledge than you. No, no, I have more biblical knowledge than you. Like this is really kind of what we're looking at. It, Cause I do believe that these synagogues and even the temple itself look a lot like what we see inside the four walls of our churches. Meanwhile, you have the, these disciples doing the business of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit.